really uh, the biggest travel day of the season. I mean, yeah. even compared to Christmas, just because right. it's all compacted into one, you know, a sure. few days. Yeah. And so Sunday, big one, a lot of folks heading back to school. We've got people yes. traveling, going back to their homes. And it's not just the ground travel, it's also air travel oh, that's sure. going to be impacted yeah. because the storm system is far reaching. Yeah, and it's interesting because <clears throat> a lot of people, obviously, traditionally, it's the uh, number one travel day of the year. Uh, this year, at least in the Midwest, I noticed a lot of people kind of getting a jump yesterday, mm -hmm. so that might alleviate the overall uh, travel population. But as you said, air and ground, and certainly ground, a biggie here because a lot of people from Omaha go up to Minneapolis, Sioux City, Sioux Falls, Des Moines, Casey, Western Central Nebraska, what have you. So really, several hundred miles in any direction, this is being impacted. Now, travel north, if you're thinking about trying that, I think you'll be okay, especially as the morning goes on. Dusting to a couple inches of snow through parts of that, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, from here south, blizzard warnings in effect as you get south the metro. Travel not recommended down that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now we've had several crews out and about covering things this morning. We're going to check in with John Kipper. John, tell us exactly where you're at right now. You can just tell by what your uh, your windshield that <laughs> things have definitely deteriorated in your location. Yeah, it is just getting nastier and nastier by the minute. Right now, Highway 75 southbound. We're actually relatively close um, to Murray right now. So south of Plattsmouth um, as we continue to go down and things just get worse and worse as we um, continue. As you can tell, obviously not a lot of light out right now. Can't give you a great idea, but it really just shows the amount of snow coming down. Maybe a better shot for that is that angle. So things like you said quickly deteriorating right in, in terms of the speeds we're going right now um, right around 30 miles an hour is all we're going and that's all that's really safe to travel um, you can't really see the road you can't really see the lanes that's completely inundated with snow and that's been the case um, really since we've been down in this area for the past 30 or 45 minutes um, and so not a lot of traffic thankfully i think people are wise and obviously it's still in the early morning hours they've stayed off the roads let's hope it stays that way um i said a little bit ago we actually saw a driver already going the wrong way it was a, a four-lane road and he was going um essentially yeah the wrong way we had to make sure we scooted over just to get out of the way so things not ideal right now we're going to kind of stay in this area as that's where a lot of the snow is coming down right now um winds also started to pick up so if you're in this area, obviously try to avoid driving on the roadways, but we'll kick it back over to you guys in the studio. Much, John, really great reminders and something that he had mentioned in one of our earlier cut ins is that any of the signage that's above ground, obviously not only the speed limits, but again, uh, directions that you need to be turning and following are completely covered. And so that's making for even more dangerous travel. And again, further to the south, that is where the blizzard warning remains in effect and the snow continues to add up. As we're watching, and this is really just a good telltale sign, starting to see a break in the activity between Columbus, Norfolk, even Tacoma, Denison. You guys are pretty much out of it now. What we're looking at is still the ban continues right along most of Douglas County to the south into Sarpy County, and then further south that you go. Now the rain and even that wintry mix switching over, and we're looking at all snow almost over most of eastern Nebraska and western Iowa, and then into northwestern Missouri. So between St. Joe to even Maryville. Now the snow is beginning to pick up and that's the area that's going to see the more significant snow totals. But we have multiple uh, really intense bands of snow even happening here in Sarpy County between Bellevue, even Glenwood, Springfield, Papillion, Gretna. So the snow totals will continue to keep adding up here because this system is a slow mover. And as we've been mentioning throughout the early morning hours, this thing is not shifting or moving a whole lot. It's hanging out right on top of Wichita. The key here, and I know that Ryan's been talking about this a lot, is the position of the storm. For this to be a big event for us, this would need to travel a little further to the north over Kansas City, which would put us in a prime spot for more significant snowfall. But this thing right now looks like it's going to travel further to the south of Kansas City, so that will still keep us in the snow, but not the heaviest bands of snow. And that's why this zone right here between northeastern Nebraska or southeastern Nebraska into northeastern Kansas, northwestern Missouri, southwestern Iowa. That is where we're anticipating the more significant snowfalls, and that's the reason why. Winter weather advisories have been issued for the Omaha Metro continue until later on this afternoon, 
and this evening. Again, the more significant wind and snow combination, bigger issues for travel and really not advised the further south you go between Nebraska City, Falls City and even into Maryville, Clorinda and Beatrice. So we're already seeing those road conditions deteriorating. Again, that is going to be the big story now. More significant snow piling up, causing snow covered roadways, wide out conditions. This will continue to really uh, become a bigger issue here through the morning hours because of the winds that continue to pick up and potential as we go into the remainder of this morning that we may see some isolated power outages across the area. Here's a live view right now. This has actually improved quite a bit uh, over the north. So this is uh, right around the downtown area. This is looking back over TD Ameritrade Park from the Omaha World Herald on top of the building there. And you can see that there are some cars traveling but seem to be moving at a fairly fast uh, rate in that location. As we look at our temperature, we're at 30. Sustained wind, 31 miles an hour. Then you add in again, even stronger wind gusts. But here is where we're looking at the strong winds due north 20, 30 and even close to 40 miles an hour. That's just sustained. Then you add in the wind gusts and now we've popped up to 43 mile per hour wind gusts in Omaha. At one point it was 51 in York, so still significant winds and that's the reason why we have the advisories and the blizzard warnings in effect because it's more about the wind than it is the snow. But now you add that snow combination with the wind and again it all makes it feel even colder outside. So wind chill readings throughout the day are going to stay in the teens. We're not going to see a huge budge. If anything, they're just going to keep dropping because of the fact that we're looking at colder air continuing to come in here once that snow starts to wind down. So really the wind is going to be a huge impact not only for the remainder of tonight, but even into early tomorrow morning. Now again, hard to say. I know a lot of folks want to know will schools be canceled tomorrow? Most likely not here in Omaha. Maybe what they might do is do some you know, sort of delayed starts. That might be a possibility, but I wouldn't be surprised that a little bit further to the south of us, higher impacts uh, with schools, and obviously we will provide you more updates with that. But we're going to check in with Ryan McPike because he's been really kind of fine tuning, getting in on just what the rates look like, what we're anticipating as far as the overall impacts here uh, for the next couple of hours or so. Ryan. All right, Zep. Yeah, exactly. Uh, boy, I tell you, I go back to that map. Uh, you know, we talk about computer models, us weather people, and uh, this forecast. We've been all over it really for a week following this storm in, and it's actually gone about as planned. Obviously, the amounts have gradually come up as a lot of times with these winter storms do, and the model's catching that. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at on Jen's other map, that low pressure kind of spinning, it continues to dig now just to the east and southeast of Wichita. And then once that thing makes the turn, you're really going to see the amounts pick up southwest Iowa, more so probably far southeast Nebraska, northwest of Missouri, and eastern Kansas, where the blizzard warnings are. So where they're just now going from rain to snow slowly, uh, once that thing starts to kind of make the loop, that's where we're really going to see it add up, say from, uh, well, probably Nebraska City down towards Kansas City along Interstate 29 there. Uh, these are radar estimates, and again, it usually estimates a little high, although uh, Becky out at the National Weather Service letting us know that she officially measured two inches in Valley. Uh, you saw things, visibility improving from our Omaha World Herald camera into downtown, uh, back into Council Bluffs. I wouldn't be shocked. I would say you could see the white out there. I'm guessing Epley is probably going to come in that one to two inch range, and that'll be one of our lower spots. And then watch this as I check out the enhanced snow, uh, mainly into Sarpy County. And it really is just we're kind of on that fine line, that cutoff here. And you can see uh, Sarpy County getting in that, say, quarter to maybe a third of an inch of snow per hour. Look at that. A heavier bands developed over toward Atlantic kind of on the eastern front. And that's again, I-80 South is going to be the area. But look at that. We've seen some heavier snow kind of on the northeast side of this system now. And that would indicate snow rates of one to two inches per hour, half inch to an inch here. And then as we go back, once again, uh, you can see the heaviest stuff continues uh, toward Beatrice. We've had reports of thunderstorm, uh, thunder snow in and around Concordia up to the northeast. And you can see those amounts in excess of three inches an hour where you get some of that. So uh, once again, we are right here on the fence. That's what I was saying. In fact, we go just check out the traditional radar here across the metro. Uh, you can see that snow line continuing to sag south. So that's another situation where, again, we may be shutting it down from north to south, but obviously the far southeastern part of the uh, viewing area is going to continue uh, to see that snow 
probably for a while here. But yeah, Jen, this is really interesting that we're uh, continuing to see that drier air moving this much in Douglas County now. Yeah, so that's happening a little faster, yeah. a little ahead yeah. of schedule, a but of okay uh, that's that. a good thing. So we'll yeah. continue to keep following uh, the latest information on this storm and providing more updates. So stay with us here at 3 News Now.